Number two, there are tools for witnessing. The reason why I say tools for ministry, thank God I've even given some context. That ministry, ministry is not just what a few people, a few people do. Ministry is what everybody, each and every one of us do, right, in the body of Christ. It's, it's, it, it is an assignment. We have been given, he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling men back to God. Now, you see, we're going to have another teaching, either on YouTube or on Telegram, you know, where we will look at what ministry, the work of ministry, we'll look at what the work of ministry really is. And then when we look at it, you now discover, okay, as much as there is specialized ministry, there is also universal ministry in the body of Christ. That as long as you are born again, the fact that, see, <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand, the fact that you receive the sacrifice of Jesus as propitiation for your own sin and the sin of the world, what does that mean? It means that you have been implicated to show men the same grace. Both in character one and beyond that, so also tell men about this thing you have come into. God committed him, you see, <laughs> there was an exchange. As you are receiving the life of Christ, you know, and of course giving in your own life, you're also receiving the ministration of the gospel that will also make other people receive the life of Christ. Praise God. So it is also, it's also a tool for ministry. Let's do a few scriptures quickly so that I can run. Now, Acts 1 and verse 8, popular scripture that you know. The Bible says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. So Jesus is saying that the direct implication of power is what? Is witnessing. So power is for witnessing. Hallelujah. We're going to look at the gifts of the Spirit. There are some of those gifts that are called the power gifts, okay? And uh, each and every one of the gifts actually showcase on some level the power of God, the superiority of God. Whether it be in knowledge, in wisdom, in discernment, it means that God is superior. God is powerful. Powerful enough to augment the senses of a man to perceive into his realm, into the realm of the spirit and have supernatural insight and knowledge and wisdom. Praise God. God is powerful. All right. Now, Jesus is saying that you shall receive power, dunamis, all right, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. Hmm. So we, we, we witness with power. Power is an essential tool for, oh my God, I remember a story, and I, I think some of you know the story. While I was on campus, all right, in um, 200 level, it was a strong atheist then. I was in um, John Hall, C, opposite, that the first wing, that's, that's, is that B, B 100 floor? Yeah, when you go in and you turn left, the last one, B 100 floor. For those of you who went to that school, I was on that floor, I was a floor chaplain, and I had just finished praying, and in my prayers and in my um, some ministry engagements before that day, I had seen something that God could do, a miracle that God was doing through me and a few people, like two of my friends on campus. So there's an atheist <laughs> that then I didn't have, not like now, then I did not really have utterance and words to convince you by just, you know, by, to bring the defense, you know, to the faith. <laughs> what I knew then, all I needed was power. I, and it worked well, <laughs> but it was, it's not enough. You know, but follow my story. Follow my story. So I got back from prayer that night and I went straight to this atheist room. I said, I heard that you don't believe in Jesus. The guy was like, who be this guy again? I said, okay, now can you just do me a favor and stretch out both of your hands? Stretch them both out. I said, in the name of Jesus that you don't believe in, let your right hand begin to grow out now. It was like joke. This guy's hand. And I thank God I called his name. He's a worker now in church. He's, a, he's the head of media team, a technical team or something like that. You know, his hand began to grow out. He was trying to bring it back. The more he brought it back, the longer the day, I love Jesus. The longer the day went. Until the point came, he said, oh yeah, I beg. I believe now. <laughs> Can you bring my hand back? I touched the hand. I said, hand, go back in the name of Jesus. That guy believed my gospel. We had flood devotion that night. He shared the testimony and eight days. We, it was like crusade. I saw people bringing, people that could not walk, bringing chairs for them to sit down on top. Oh my God. Just one miracle, preach a thousand sermons, and then I preached the gospel. All right, because the miracle is not what saves a man. It's the gospel that does. Thank God I, did, I also preached that night. It was powerful. It was powerful. You see, and that just me letting you know that we witness by power. We witness with power. Bible was speaking about um, Philip that he was, you know, going is that, is that Acts eight. Pardon me now. Going about his ministry endeavors, and there were Bible says there were so many miracles and healings that God wrought through him, and there was great joy in that city. Great joy in that. City. I, believe, I believe that was Samaria. There was great joy in that city. Hallelujah. Great joy. You see, your message is not complete until there is power. 
and I'll, I will say and believe this to the day I drop out of this earth and go and meet my maker. Word is good, but Paul said, I did not come with enticing words, but to demonstrate spirit and power. Let me tell you this. Even in his spoken ministry, there was the demonstration. Because after he made that statement, he began to teach them. So I'm saying even in your teaching, there should be power there. It should be obvious that your words have been sourced by the vocabulary of a sp- an immortal spirit. Ay! Don't speak dead words. Dead words cannot give life to a man. It's an, it's an irony. No. The words I speak unto you, they are spiritual and they are life-giving. That's what Jesus said. And that's the ministry. We are able ministers. We have been endued with the ability of God to bring service to humanity. That's who you are. That's who you are. You know why I'm smiling and I'm laughing? I'm seeing visions of glory 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. Things that God will do through me. And my spirit is just jumping. It's just jumping. When they brought his report back to Jesus concerning what they had done with the authority that he gave them, the Bible says he leaped for joy. Hey! So that's what's happening. There's agalio. It's, it's, uh, there's rejoicing in my spirit. I'm not going to die soon. I'm going to see all that God has said. <laughs> I'm still on that point. The Bible says in Mark 16 verse 20, and they went out and preached everywhere. It didn't stop there. It's good to preach and please preach everywhere. But what did it say? They went out and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, like Bishop Edubo, the Lord walking with them <laughs> and confirming the word, the word through accompanying signs. I want to pray for you that from today, as you go out for ministry, as you go out and you speak, the evident signs of the power of God backing up your words will become enormous. You will see power, demons cast out, sick, healed, dead, raised by the spoken ministry that God has given unto every single one of us. As you go out, you will see miracles, you will see signs, and you will see wonders that will accompany the word that you are speaking no more drought in your life no more deadness oh my god there's an avalanche an avalanche of grace being stirred up in the spirits of the listeners right now just receive where you are in the name of jesus christ i feel fire here all right the lord walking with them working with them and confirming so signs come to confirm the words that we speak and the word signs they are also in the greek word it also means miracles all right miracles another translation actually says the lord you know confirming their word through miracles praise the lord are you being blessed Hi. the word they bless me <laughs> all right let me run quickly luke 9 verse 1 and, and, and verse 2 bible says then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure the diseases. What, what did he say in verse 2? He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. My spiritual father always says something. He says, don't believe a man that cannot cast out devil. <laughs> don't believe a man that cannot heal the sick. Jesus has not said he. The, I believe the Bible, the pattern from scripture. Before Jesus sends you, there are two essential commodities that he invests into the life of a sent one. It's called power and authority. That's a sign that Jesus has sent you. Yeah. Otherwise, everybody can speak. But in Mark 1, when Jesus began to speak, they said, what doctrine is this? For with authority he speaks, and even the unclean spirits. Hey. What new doctrine is this? The scribes can speak. Pharisees can speak. Doctors of the law can quote the Torah. (laughs) But we quote Torah and we quote power too. Oh yes. We dish word, tell you that Jesus is alive. He died and he, 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 he was resurrected without the help of any man. He brought himself. He, the temple was destroyed by men. He built it back again. He ascended into heaven majestically. Aish. And he has sent me to tell you that he's alive. And because he's alive, that sickness, that, that growth on your back that you've had for seven years is gone. I like that kind of ministry. It's good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good.